Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the United States of America from Atlanta, Georgia. One housekeeping note as we begin the show today, October 28th, two weeks before the election. It's the Friday, two weeks before the election. Well, we can uh, someday. Okay, you know what I mean. Um... I'm going to be at the Governor's Gun Club in Kennesaw, Georgia. You are welcome to be there with me. It'll be a bourbon tasting event. You can check out the gun range. If you show up early, you can shoot. If you've had bourbon, they'll give you a voucher to come back and shoot. The lawyers don't want you shooting after you've been drinking. Uh, But I will be there with uh, some guests to talk about politics, the closeout of the election. We'll have someone from Brian Kemp's campaign there, uh, Rich McCormick, a Marine ER doctor who's going to be a future member of Congress. Uh, Other folks, I'll be taking your questions, hang out. It's got the world's larger, the nation's largest indoor skeet shooting. Uh, It's a fantastic facility. All you got to do is text BOURBON to 33777 to get tickets. Uh, there's a VIP ticket. You can show up early and hang out early with me. Uh, and then there's a ticket to the general doors open event for people to come uh, hang out, hear the speakers, hear me, and a- ask questions. Text Bourbon to 33777. Now, I want to move on, but if you want to talk about Herschel Walker still, just stay on the lines, 877-973-7425. The Herschel Walker story doesn't operate in a vacuum. There are... Three real must-win races. I'm not going to include J.D. Vance in Ohio in this because I think J.D. Vance in Ohio has it locked in. Uh, What I am going to tell you, though, is that beyond J.D. Vance, uh, you got Ron Johnson in Wisconsin, uh, Mehmet Oz in Pennsylvania, and Adam Laxalt in Nevada. Now, those of you listening out in Las Vegas, uh, Adam Laxalt is going to be on the radio with me later this week. Marco Rubio is as well. Uh, for those of you in Florida, Adam Laxalt is now in the lead in Nevada. Now, polling in Nevada is hard, but the Republicans are leading in the Senate and in the governor's race. And when they lead in both races, that tends to be an indication Republicans have momentum there. Laxalt continues to go up. There's been a real shift in polling to him over the last several months. In fact, I'm, I'm looking real clear politics polling average. He's now up 2.2 points in the polling average. Uh, and that's uh, an increase. He, he's, he has continued to go up. Uh, he had been up about a point. Uh, the crossover came in September and he's had real momentum since then. Uh, he's probably going to win that race. If he wins that race, the Republicans will probably hold the Senate. Why? Because Ron Johnson is now up three points in Wisconsin in the polling average. John Fetterman is up 4.3 points in Pennsylvania. Keep in mind, Pennsylvania has a historic polling average that's about six points in favor of the Democrats. Let me give you all of the polls in Pennsylvania. Susquehanna, Susquehanna, uh, Fetterman up five. CBS News, YouGov, Fetterman up five. Trafalgar Group, uh, Fetterman up two. Morning Call, Fetterman up five. Franklin and Marshall, Fetterman four. Marist, Fetterman seven. WTXF, Insider Advantage, Fetterman three. Fox News, Fetterman four. The Hill Emerson, Fetterman two. USA Today, Suffolk, Fetterman six. What's notable is that the uh, polls that have him up very high have very small pools of likely voters. Uh, The Hill-Emerson poll has 1,000 likely voters. It's Fetterman up two. Fox News has him up four, and it was over 1,000 voters, but they didn't give the number for likely voters. Uh, The race has trended towards Dr. Oz there. 
He's still a favorite to win. Uh, most people think, and why? Because there's been a 5.5% shift in the polling there. Every single pollster who has polled Pennsylvania over the last four months has seen a significant shift to Dr. Oz, as high as seven points, as low as two points, but still a shift in his direction. And now uh, Nate Cohen at the New York Times Republicans gain in the Senate. A closer look at Pennsylvania and Nevada and some Democratic leads that seem vulnerable. If you're a Democrat in Pennsylvania, there's still one very important thing you can cling to in Pennsylvania, the lead. John Fetterman still leads Dr. Mehmet Oz in the polls taken since Labor Day. In fact, he basically leads in every one of them by an average of around four percentage points. But Dr. Oz has made gains. He's closed by a net of six percentage points post-Labor Day compared to the surveys of the same pollsters before Labor Day. Why has he surged? Well, crime. Republicans are excited. Democrats are okay. And he's just pounded and pounded and pounded on crime. Wisconsin and Pennsylvania aren't necessarily the only places where the GOP is gaining. Republicans have picked up 1.4 points in post-Labor Day Senate surveys in states other than Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. The story isn't so clear in other states. There are fewer polls than in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. But of those states, it's Nevada where the Republicans seem closest to assembling convincing evidence of a breakthrough. The recent polling there is fragmentary, but all the recent polls show Laxalt leading the incumbent Democratic Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. In the only two post-Labor Day surveys with a pre-Labor Day counterpart, Laxalt has gained nearly three points. It's still murky, though. You have the situation in Arizona with Blake Masters. Masters isn't running a great campaign. He's going up in the polls, but probably not enough to beat Mark Kelly. Uh, In the polling average, Kelly is up four percentage points, even as uh, Masters has started going up in the polls. But there, let me just give it it to you. Uh, The Republicans had Kelly up two. The Democrats have Kelly up one. The Arizona Republic newspaper has Kelly up seven. Marist has Kelly up five. Fox News has Kelly up five. All of these show trends for Blake Masters, but none of them show him ahead. And Arizona typically doesn't have a massive polling bias for the Democrats. What gives Republicans more hope, though, is what's happening on K Street. K Street is where the lobbyists work in Washington, D.C. This is from the Washington Post this morning. The midterm elections are five weeks away. K Street is already preparing for the possibility of a Speaker Kevin McCarthy if Republicans take the House. To prepare for divided government, Washington lobbying firms have begun hiring aides to McCarthy, who's currently House Minority Leader, and other top Republicans. They've held briefings and drafted memos for clients on what a Republican House would mean for them, and they've been shepherding clients to meet with Republican lawmakers and staffers who are likely to be in positions of power. Republicans are bullish on retaking the House, which requires them to flip only a handful of seats. They face tougher odds in the Senate, and it may not be clear until December which party controls the chamber if neither Warnock nor Walker secure 50% of the vote. If only the House goes, I think stuff can get done. If both chambers go, I think it's going to be a wasted two years because I don't think the new House leadership is really going to be able to control a lot of the new Marjorie Taylor Greens to productively legislate, says Rich Gold, a Democratic lobbyist. <laughs> well, um, one way or the other, they're preparing for the Republicans to take the House. Now, this is important. There will be some people who decide because the Republicans are taking the House, uh, who cares about the Senate? except judges and treaties, judges, other political appointments, and treaties. If you're mad about the border situation, if you're mad about progressive judges, if you're mad about the regulatory state, you have to give Republicans control of the Senate because the House has nothing to do with appointments. The Senate is the one that controls the appointments. The House does not even consider them. According to the Constitution of the United States, the president nominates and the Senate advises and consents to his nominations or chooses to withhold it. He's got to go to the Senate. So if you want to make fundamental change in Washington, not just stop spending, you got to give the Republicans control of the Senate. 
And that then gets you back to those 27,000 some odd voters in Georgia who sat out 2020. What does the Walker team do to convince people like that? They've got to come out and vote for him, even if they don't like him, even if they don't like the stories. What's his message? And again, I think this goes back to those other races we mentioned. Adam Laxalt in Nevada is aggressively running about crime and the economy. What COVID lockdowns did to the Nevada economy, what crime is doing in Reno and Las Vegas, he's making a big, big play about a massive crime wave in Nevada. He's making a big, big play about all the uh, economic concerns in Nevada. In Wisconsin, Ron Johnson is almost singularly focused on Mandela Barnes being so progressive, he wants to defund the police. I thought it was funny. Andrea Mitchell had Mandela Barnes on MSNBC last night and said, you don't really want to defund the police according to the record, and Mandela Barnes denied it, and Republicans ran the video and then interspersed it with clips of interviews Mandela Barnes has done in the past where he says, we got to defund the police. Ron Johnson can use that against Mandela Barnes. And then in Pennsylvania, Dr. Oz has almost singularly focused at this point on crime and John Fetterman wanting to let murders out of prisons. And this matters because of some polling that's come in overnight from CNN. The crime and abortion, because both of those, their placement on that chart was surprising me. So I was interested, what are people searching for on Google? What is it that comes to their mind? So this is Google searches, crime versus abortion, the percentage among those who search for either. Look, around the time that Roe v. Wade was overturned in June, crime was just at 30% of all the searches that people were searching between crime and abortion. Abortion was at 70%. In May, again, abortion higher than crime. In July, it was basically tied. Abortion slightly higher than crime. But look now in September. Crime, 71% to just 29% for abortion. That is basically back to the pre-Roe v. Wade overturning sort of baseline where we were back in April, where crime was making up 74% of the searches versus abortion at just 26%. Exactly. And that's something the Democrats have to keep in mind. The border and immigration is also surging in the minds of voters. And that's something Republicans have going for them that Democrats don't. The issues overwhelmingly still favor Republicans. And that gets me back to Herschel Walker in Georgia. He can mitigate the damage don't know that he can completely fix it, but he can mitigate it. He can mitigate it by pivoting and saying, again, this is all a negative false attack. It's designed to distract you from your 401k. It's designed to distract you from crime. It's designed to distract you from the issues you care about. It's a false attack by a bunch of people who refuse to take responsibility for wrecking our economy. You're happy with your 401k? Vote for Warnock. You're not happy with it? Vote for me. You're happy with crime in your city? Vote for Warnock. You're scared to leave your house? You vote for me. There's a way for him to do this. There is a way for him to do it to try to get those people to come out to him. It's possible for him to win. I think it's less probable, but it's possible. I will tell you, a Walker's campaign says they've had an overnight surge in fundraising. And I would tell you, if you support Herschel Walker, you probably need to write him a check because they need the money to get on the airwaves to push back against this aggressively. Uh, now, I'm happy to continue to take your calls on this. We've got a lot of other news to talk about today. We've also got to talk about the situation with Russia and, and sending nukes to Ukraine. They've made a big show of it. But other political news out there and other cultural news as well, including the firing of a professor at NYU. But your phone calls to 877-973-7425. Happy to take them. We'll be right back. So winter is coming, and I got to tell you, I love the weight of the bull and branch sheets. I like them in the summer when it's hot and you don't want a lot of covers on you. But in the wintertime, they're just the perfect weight, the perfect, I don't know, smoothness. They're 100% organic cotton threads. They've got super softness. They get softer every time you wash them. They're just the drape when you're laying down and stuff. They're not. They're just perfect sheets. I love them. Uh, I am effusive with my praise for Bull and & Branch, and I'm delighted to have them as an advertiser. Look, they're made from the highest quality threads. They've got superior softness. They've got over 25,000 rave customer reviews and counting. I'm one of them. The quality you can tell is great. They hold up well after all the washes I've put them through. 
and they just get softer. It doesn't matter what the thread count is if the fiber sucks, and you can tell they put a lot of great detail into the fibers they use. And look, Bowler Branch gives you a 30-night risk-free trial with free shipping, returns on all orders. You're going to feel the difference. You're not going to want to send them back. The first 100% organic fair trade certified bedding company ever. They use 90% less water than conventional production. Zero press pesticides, other chemical, chem, toxic chemicals. They don't use them. It's just fantastic. Listen, I'm effusive with my praise. I love Bull and Branch. Try them for yourself. And again, you get a 30-night risk-free trial, free shipping, returns on all orders. Try the sheets that will make you fall for the coziest night sleep in the season where you want cozy sheets. 15% off your first set of sheets. Free shipping when you use promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, at BolandBranch.com. That's BolandBranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. The promo code is ERIC. Trust me, they're worth it. We've got five bedrooms, five beds, Bolin Branch sheets on every bed. Uh, we have a statement from the president of the United States, Donald Trump, about Herschel Walker. Just was pushed out a short time ago. Uh, before I tell you about that, uh, just a reminder, uh, you can come hang out with me at the Governor's Gun Club in Kennesaw, Georgia. It's available to any listener anywhere if you want to come to Kennesaw, Georgia. Largest indoor skeet shooting, fantastic gun range. They've also got a heck of a restaurant. It's like a country club, but instead of golf, it's guns. And they got a big bourbon collection, and we're going to be there October 28th. Text the word bourbon to 33777 if you want to get tickets. Uh, there's a VIP ticket where you get to come early, hang out, um, get the tour, be with me the whole time. And then there's the general admission ticket for later in the evening. Just come hear the talks uh, with the speakers and with me and ask me questions. Now, here's the statement from Donald Trump. Herschel Walker is being slandered and maligned by the fake news media and obviously the Democrats. Interestingly, I've heard many horrible things about his opponent, Raphael Warnock, things that nobody should be talking about, so we don't. Herschel has properly denied the charge against him, and I have no doubt he is correct. They are trying to destroy a man who has true greatness in his future, just as he had athletic greatness in his past. It's very important for our country and the great state of Georgia that Herschel Walker wins the election. With all that Herschel has accomplished, when you come from Georgia and you see the name Herschel Walker when voting, it will be very hard to resist. Don't. That's the statement from Donald Trump about Herschel Walker. Now, to the phones, 877-973-7425. Jim, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the show, Jim. Oh, thank you. Thanks for taking my call. So my comment is related to Herschel Walker, but also to Republican candidates in general. Republicans tend to not have fight in them. As soon as something gets pushed back against them, they, they tend to back off and die. So the Democrats heavily promote second chances. They speak extensively about substance abuse and about mental health. So now you have somebody that they're trying to destroy because of substance abuse and mental health. Instead of giving a person credit for, yes, you faced this drug addiction, you treated it, you worked with your family, you overcame it, you're successful, you moved forward and learned from your mistakes. Why don't the Demo or excuse me, why don't the Republicans have fight in them to push back against that? You know, that was the enduring, endearing part of Donald Trump's candidacy for a lot of Republicans is he wasn't a shrinking violet and, and he did fight. And now I, I got to tell you, I'm being beaten up by a lot of Republicans online today saying, oh, you're just abandoning him. You're abandoning him. I'm, I'm just trying to tell people what's happening in the state. And there are a lot of Republicans who are like, ah, this is bad. Uh, you know, John Fetterman is the good contrast to Herschel Walker here. John Fetterman uh, is a, a ta tax absconder, wanted to let murderers out of prison, lived in his parents' basement, apparently literally for some time, uh, and the Democrats have stood by their man. And so Republicans look at this and they're like, why Republicans? Why won't you stand by your man? I get that, but I also get Republicans have tended to be the party that says character counts. Um, it, this is a this is going to be something that Walker himself needs to respond to and put on a fight. And I do think, to your point, if Walker himself shows he's going to fight, you'll have a lot of Republicans who fight with him. 
Uh, and they're going to have to persuade those independent voters who would sit home that giving Republicans control of the Senate is way more important than you not liking Herschel Walker, who's going to vote the right way to hold the Democrats accountable. If they can do that, they got a shot at this. Tom, you're going to be back. Tom, well, or you're going to be on the show. Tom, welcome. How are you? Thanks, Eric, for taking my call. You've uh, already answered my question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Screener. That's all right. Your call screener was great. My, I remember going back two weeks ago, I believe, when you talked about uh, Trump sitting on $99 million, And uh, you had mentioned at the time that he could be using that money for defense. And I thought, that's strange. He can do that? And your call screener, screener explained that he can do that. He can spend it any way he wants. And I yeah. just wonder if that's an um, issue, I... but... Look, I, 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 it is, it is an issue, um, and he's got to spend the money. So here's what happens. Uh, so, and I'm glad you asked this, Tom. Let, let me explain this for everyone. Uh, a presidential, a, a, any campaign for office cannot coordinate with a super PAC, even though that super PAC is designed to promote the candidate. So what the candidate can do is essentially film a lot of stuff, B-roll footage, if you will, talking to the camera, shaking hands, whatever. And then a super PAC can take that video that they've put on YouTube where anyone can find it, and they can turn that into an ad. There's no coordination there whatsoever. They just put it online and let the super PAC run. They could do that. The Walker campaign could do something like that uh, if they choose to do it. Uh, some candidates do this, and uh, they may need to if they're short of money. You can also contribute to the Walker campaign. Um, but they got to respond and they got to respond quick. 877-973-7425 if you want to be on the show. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Lots of folks want to weigh in on the Herschel Walker situation. We do have other news, but given it is the biggest political story in America today, feel like I should take these. Full disclosure, by the way, um, just so you know, I will be in again tomorrow for Ben Shapiro, in addition to doing my show nationally, uh, it's Young Kapoor for him, so he'll be off. I'm sure I'll talk about this issue some more then, too. Uh, let's go to Claudia up next. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show. Claudia, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? I love your show. I've been listening to your show for a long, long time. But my issue with Democrats and uh, Republicans is that uh, they, they say that they all right for this, right for that, right for this. You catch someone in lie and it don't matter. It no matter what they do, no matter about lying, cheating, stealing, nothing matters if you want the person to win. And that is not, that's not fair. That's not right. So I'm not understanding if, if you say, okay, I'm, I'm for life. Uh, and then you lie because it's, if he's, if he's turned out to be true, then you say, oh, it don't matter. It don't matter. We just need one more, one more senator. It don't matter what they do. So I know, I don't understand. I'm trying to understand. Ah, uh, okay. Um, there will be some people, Glor uh, Claudia, who look at this race and say Republicans controlling the Senate is more important than any one of the Republicans, however flawed he may be, that we have to uh, back someone like Herschel Walker, whether we like it or not, because Republicans need control of the Senate. There will be people who embrace that view. Uh, that you got to stop Joe Biden, you got to stop the Democrats. It doesn't so matter how flawed the Republicans. We sell our souls. Is. We sell our souls Look, to the devil. We there sell are, our souls. There are a lot of people who will take that view. You may not take that view, but a lot of people will. And so, what happens thereafter? And this is a question: Will there be more people like that? Or will there be people who say, "I can't do it. Character counts. I believe character counts. What am I teaching my kids?" Uh, I've, I can't vote for a guy this deeply flawed. Uh, the question here now is how many more people are there, one or the other? Uh, are there more people who think character counts and so they can't vote for him? And, well, you should have found a better candidate. You're asking me to vote for someone deeply flawed. I'm not going to do it. Or will there be people who think, well, the Republicans have to be in charge? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I, I really, I don't know. 
Uh, I, I I will tell you this, uh, that there were 27,000 people who refused to vote in the presidential race in 2020 suggest there are at least 27,000 people in Georgia who are like, I'm not voting against someone. I want to vote for someone. And I'm not going to vote for Walker because i got to stop Warnock. I'm not going to vote for Warnock because i got to stop Walker. I'm just not voting. Uh, it's not about, and, and this is what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get people to understand this. Let me let me roll some tape here so Philip Philip can at least put something out there so people will stop sending me hate mail. This is not about me. I'm just trying to get people to understand the dynamic in Georgia. 27,000, let me give you the, the very precise number, 27,967 voters in Georgia refused to vote on the presidential line in 2020. Joe Biden won by slightly more than 11,000 votes. Those 27,967 people said, I'm not voting for either one of these guys. Someone I know told me this morning very passionately, I'm tired of having to vote for a bad candidate because I'm supposed to hate the other person more. I'm tired of doing it. I'm not going to do it. I want to vote for someone and I'm not going to vote for Herschel Walker just to stop Raphael Warnock. Walker hasn't given me a reason to vote for him. That's what I was told by someone this morning. I understand that sentiment. There are going to be two groups of people who you have to contend with. One is we must vote Republican no matter what because the candidate himself doesn't matter. The party matters. The party needs to control the Senate. We've got to stop Joe Biden. Therefore, I will hold my nose, grin and bear it, and vote for him. And then there's the other side of I'm tired of voting for bad candidates, character counts, I'm not voting for him. I don't know which group is more dominant. I do know 27,000 people took the I'm not voting for either one of them in 2020. So the question is in Georgia, which group is larger? If the we got to hand Republicans the Senate is larger, Walker probably wins. If the uh, these are both terrible candidates and I don't have to pick, I'm going to avoid it. Well, then Warnock wins. There's always the libertarian candidate people can vote for and push it into a runoff. And the diehards can sort it out in a runoff if you want to subject yourselves to a runoff. I don't know that that'll happen. What I do know is that you got to get to 50% plus one in Georgia to win or there is a runoff. And maybe the libertarian will see a surge uh, in, in a protest vote. But I suspect... There will be a good number of people who just don't vote, and that would help Warnock if that happens. That's just the reality, whether you like it or not. That's the reality. I don't know which group is larger. I just know those groups exist, and they're the ones that matter right now. Now, back to the phones we go. Mike, you're going to be up next. Welcome, Mike. How are you? Hey, Eric. Uh, First-time caller. Uh, My grandfather was Swedish. Uh, Excellent. Out of Greva. Reba Sweden. Huh. Anyway, uh, the, my point is, Herschel Walker, famous athlete, you know, famous, rich, whatever, has a kids out of wedlock. Who really cares? I mean, how many, if you group everybody that's famous, athletes, you know, rock stars, rappers, whatever, that have kids out of wedlock, nobody, nobody worries about it. So that's not the issue. The issue is, is that do you want a Democrat to take that seat and have all the crazy stuff that the Democrats are are providing or are doing to the country? You know, letting the kids go in the bathrooms and doing all the crazy stuff that's going on that people are just scratching their head like, what in the world is going on in this country? What's t- what are we turning into? And it's all because of the Democratic Party and all the liberals that are that are doing all this stuff. I don't see why it's a big deal. I mean, Herschel Walker has had issues, but you know what? I'm not to judge him, you know? And then yeah. the whole thing is, it's not, and also, as an Af- African American, it's not that uncommon in an African American society or whatever for kids out of wedlock. The whole welfare system is that. So, okay, so so let let me just say, I'm glad you called, Mike, for this reason, because you are identify one of the, uh, Claudia, who called last, is of that group of, I'm just not voting for these guys, character grounds, and you're in the group of, 
we got to stop the Democrats. And the only way to do it is vote for someone I may not care for because the parties and the issues matter way more than the individual candidate. Uh, Y'all are on opposite sides of this. I don't know which of you is the larger group. Most of my friends are in your group uh, that uh, that who cares about Walker? This is about stopping Warnock and Biden. I got to go vote for him. Uh, I do know what the data is on the other group from 2020, uh, and it's 27,900 some odd people. And that was enough in 2020. Typically, midterm elections have lower turnout. One thing Walker has for him that can't be underestimated is Brian Kemp has a turnout operation. And the Brian Kemp turnout operation could matter significantly uh, for Herschel Walker helping get him across the finish line. It's very possible that that helps Herschel Walker get across the finish line. I don't know whether it will for sure, but it definitely is something that's going to matter to the Walker campaign to rely on a much more aggressive uh, turnout operation from Brian Kemp to maximize Republican turnout. Uh, Edward, welcome to the Eric Erickson Show. Edward, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Good. Uh, I met, I was actually, I was at in West Paces last night, and Herschel's bus was in that parking lot with the Publix and OK Cafe and all this. And so, you know, I saw some of his guys coming across, and I said, hey, you know, I hope y'all win. I'm praying for you. And they said, well, he's in Tommy's Barbershop. You should go meet him. So, you know, I walked over there, met him, asked him, how can I, you know, donate money to you? Because I get, you know, I think I heard you talking a month ago about getting, like, 70 win red emails and text every day, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I've tried to block those. And they said, go to team Herschel. You can donate, which I did. But uh-huh. my question is why is, I mean, you never see Brian Kemp, you know, like talking about Herschel or, or vice versa. And is Brian Kemp afraid of Herschel's whatever, all of this talk? Which no, I that's a good question. Um, by and large, the way candidates tend to campaign around here and elsewhere is they run their own race. There have been a series of joint events over time, uh, but campaigns aren't allowed to coordinate with each other generally under campaign finance rules. And because they never okay. want to be accused of coordination, they don't want the, the other side filing a complaint, getting a, a big headline story that they were coordinating across campaigns and stuff. They tend not to do that. So you don't see big Burt Jones, Brian Kemp events, Burt Jones, lieutenant governor candidate. You don't see uh, Herschel Walker with Brian Kemp. They'll occasionally be on the campaign tra- trail together for events that are organized by the state party. But the other aspect of this is that none of them trust the state party right now. They don't really want to have a lot to do with the state party. The state party is the group that if they coordinate the events, it's okay. Nobody's going to get in trouble, come to the event. None of them trust the state party leadership right now, so they've avoided uh, doing any of those events. That's the only reason why. Uh, Kemp, I will say, I just saw in the AJC earlier today, um, did not mention Herschel Walker by name, but said it's his job at the top of the ticket to maximize turnout for every Republican uh, and emphasize okay. every, which means his campaign ground team is going to try to help Herschel Walker. I hope that answers the question for you. That, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's what they need because I feel like there's more people that are going to vote for Herschel. And I agree with you. I knew this was coming for him. I hated to see him have this brought back up over and over because you know they go back from when you were an infant right if you spit up on somebody i mean it's just ridiculous <laughs> yes but you know we there could be a video of Raphael warnock choking his wife and running over with a car and we wouldn't even put it out there it's right. just ridiculous but the other thing i was glad to be in the middle of atlanta and see republicans <laughs> 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 yeah, there are some up in that that part. Look, I got to let you go there, Edward. I appreciate it. There are some Republicans up in that part of the city. John, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the show, John. Hey, Eric. Was uh, glad to hear you bringing up uh, all the topics on uh, on uh, this uh, Senate race. But uh, I was going to say that uh, sometimes God uses a flawed character in order to do his work. I'm not going to throw uh, potential Senator Walker uh, up in the line of uh, King David, but uh, you know there were some despicable things King David did, and uh, uh, but he still was able to get some good works done. And um, if it, if we want to talk about you know uh, wife beating and stuff like that, I mean there's some fresh video uh, from WSB just a couple of years ago on uh, 
the good current senator that um, may or may not find its way to the uh, airwaves. Well, well, Warnock's uh, divorce proceeding was when they, this year. When they did a video seal. with the Atlanta police in the driveway of his house. Yeah. Um, yep. So... Um, you know, the problem Hot with that one, though, John, on, on this one is that uh, at this point, Walker needs to provide people a reason to vote for him, not just against Warnock uh, to I, maximize I agree. And the, turnout. And, and, and the I Democrats can't do, do uh, it. Yeah, the Democrats, they can't uh, they can't fight him on policy uh, because they got bad policies out there. And yeah. Warnock's on record of voting for all of that. And like you said, we need to stick with crime, taxes, the economy. Uh, if you want better of all of those then uh, you need to uh, uh, vote for Walker. Otherwise, uh, you uh, if you're happy with uh, the way things are, then uh, stay with Warnock and enjoy the chaos that uh, he's induced. Yep, I agree with you. Listen, i got to let you go there because i got to remind people, if you want to work with an organization that is actually helping fight on the ground in a lot of races around the country and also providing you great service, Patriot Mobile is who you want to go with. Uh, they're Christian conservatives. They actually play in politics. They're not afraid to back good conservative candidates in the country and also good conservative causes. What they do is you move your cell phone business to them. They give you guaranteed great service. You help them generate a profit and they take that profit and they use it around the country uh, to fund conservative causes, the pro-life movement, the second amendment movement, and also great conservative candidates. All you got to do is go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. And you will uh, see their landing page. They got a detailed map. You can check all the way down to your house how good the coverage is. 5G, data, voice, you name it. Uh, PatriotMobile.com slash E R I C K. Or you can call them 972 Patriot. 972 Patriot. They've got 100% US based customer service. They give you great discounts. Uh, and they help all the causes you care about. They're good Christian conservative businessmen. They're running the cell phone company because they're committed to getting your business so they can grow the conservative movement with you. PatriotMobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. Got a whole lot of people who suggest, you know, if, if Walker can just get Warnock into a runoff uh, and the Republicans are able to take the Senate already, uh, that Walker could win in a runoff. Well, if you if you just don't vote on that, you, you boost Warnock getting to 50%, so you still got to go in and vote. If you vote libertarian, um, but uh, all sorts of people, machinations pushing through. Uh, we 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 got others. We got others. I want to take uh, other phone calls, and we got other stuff to talk about right now. I want to go to Lisa. You're going to be up next, Lisa. Welcome to the show. Hi, um, I'm confused about what's going on. I'm going to tell everybody, all the Republicans, the same thing I tell my Democratic friends. We're supposed to be voting policy, not personality. So if you're going to vote that way, you need to understand that you're going to either vote for a person who potentially had one abortion or you're going to vote for the person who believes in nine month abortions. But you're going to pick either way it goes. So, you know, when you send someone up to D.C., you're sending them up there to support the policies that you want. That's the problem. And also in terms of fighting back, where's the Raphael Warnock? I assault my wife commercials. Who pulled the foyer for the 911 call for that one? Where is it at? You got to fight back. Yeah, look, you, you do. And, and the Walker team, there was a super PAC that ran the Warnock attack ad with his ex-wife in it. Um, and the Walker campaign has not done that. Uh, and they could have. They had a chance to define this race and define Warnock. And, and this is kind of, this is campaign 101. Just, just let, let's look at basic campaign fundamentals. One of the things you have to do is define yourself. If you don't define yourself, the other side is going to define you. You can't rest on your laurels. And I think that's been one of the mistakes going back to the primary, the Walker campaign made. They played it very safe because he's Herschel Walker. Everybody knows him. Except as I've been saying going back to the primary, that's not really true anymore uh, because there are so many people who live in Georgia who did not live here when Herschel Walker was a thing. The state has largely changed. And he needed to uh, be able to define himself and did not do that. And so the Warnock campaign came in and essentially they defined Herschel Walker as someone you can't really trust. Uh, you can say it's not fair. You can complain about it, but you can't deny that's what happened. And so now every time Herschel Walker says something, there's a question as to whether or not you can believe him. That's just the reality of the situation. Again, though, 
I'm getting a lot of text messages from people saying, oh my gosh, this is a disaster. He's going to lose now. While I think it had been probable he would win and is probable now he will not, it's still possible that he wins. It's still possible that he can turn this around. Um, and the question for Herschel Walker's campaign is how badly does he want to win? And if he really badly wants to win, he needs to come out super aggressively in the next 48 to 72 hours. Do not let this week go by without coming out and forcefully denouncing it, forcibly denying it, and making it about a distraction from the real issue, which is the economy and crime, the border and all of that. If he can do that, he can mitigate the damage. He's got to mitigate the damage. Just like Democrats playing up abortion right now to drive out Democrats. He's got to drive up the economy crime issues to maximize Republican turnout, try to persuade those independents to still vote for him. There is a path here, just a very narrow one. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.